A story of life, love, happiness, sadness, elation, rejection, and perhaps even discovering if you might be the worst person in the world, which is a new movie written and directed by Joachim Trier, who did Thelma, written by Escovat, who did Thelma and the Innocents, and this is set in Oslo, Norway, from Neon Studios and Oslo Pictures, and since it's set in Norway, I apologize if I mispronounce either of those names, or if I'm going to mispronounce any of the names of the actors to follow. Retina Revis who plays Julie, the main titular character, which is a word I always react to with the good taste and maturity you come to expect from me, and also focuses on her, at the time, boyfriend, Oscar. Andres Danielson Lee, and then there's Elvind, <coughs> Herbert uh, Nivon, and Hans Olaf Brenner, who plays old, old Magnus. Yeah, it's pretty goddamn ridiculous I'm even trying to pronounce these names. I really, really apologize to anybody from Norway for butchering that stuff. But this tells a story set over four years about Julie discovering who she is, being in relationships, rejection, breaking up, and just going from job to job and being, you know, with her family, having issues with her family, wanting kids, not wanting kids, basically being a journey of growing up. And also it kind of proves that... Even somebody with the best goddamn intentions may not actually be a very good person. Everybody's flawed. And boy, Julie's flawed. <laughs> but I want to say, the actress really does a goddamn good job portraying the conflicted, you know, conflicting emotions that she has, figuring out what she wants to do with her life. Obviously, as any young woman growing up, as opposed to any young woman or young person growing down, unless you are from the land of Oz, and you are shrinking, and if you are, consult your local medical facility and your local doctor for shrinking and anal bleeding. What? Wow. Non-wrestling fans have no fucking idea what I'm talking about, but that's a shout to all the wrestling fans that happen to be watching this. So, in all seriousness, this was a highly touted movie, critically praised, film festivals loved it, and it was finally available on streaming for an affordable price, and I finally sat down to watch it, and... fucking phenomenal. This was great shit. It is a character study, a dramedy. There's some good comedy, <clears throat> some very good drama, some very emotional stuff, some stuff that really just practically rips out your heart and plucks at the goddamn strings. <laughs> Why you're plucking at the heart up here? I have no idea. The spoiler section will come up in a little bit, but Julie, um, it, it's told in chapters with a prologue, 12 chapters, and epilogue. And they don't show every single chapter break, but they show enough of them where you see the progression and, in some cases, a regression of some characters, how they handle various things that life throws at them. <clears throat> you know, illnesses, Julie having her own conflictions, Osco being stuck in his work. We find out how these relationships came together. Julie is a headstrong young woman that don't need no man. Actually, she's bouncing from, you know, job to job, working at a bookstore, <clears throat> doing photography studying stuff in college or at university, as they uh, say, across the pond and in Europe, which apparently Europe is not across the pond the way I'm describing that, but nevertheless, she, um, she's in her, she gets together with some of the people that she does photography with, and then she meets Oskar at a party. And a romance blossoms, despite the age difference. He even says, hey, you know, I'm like, you're young enough, I'm near 40 or just over 40, Maybe we shouldn't do this or whatever, because I, I know what I want. Even though I'm trying to figure some things out, you really need to figure out what you want. <clears throat> but, of course, obviously they get together, because otherwise we wouldn't have much of a movie if they didn't, you know, tease that. Tease us and taintalize us a little bit, and then have the romance happen. So, the narration voice is nice. Um, there's two women that do the narration. <clears throat> um, two respective girlfriends. There's good music, very good pacing, uh, the cinematography is very well done. There's a few weird moments. Neon Studios has a weird thing about having stuff that's really, really good or really, really shit. But Neon Studios gets things right a lot more than they don't get things right. Next to A24, Neon Studios is my favorite studio out there. They take chances, they put out some good shit, they put out some weird shit that I fucking love, like Titane or <coughs> Titane, or however the fuck you want to pronounce that. And since I really liked that, I was like, okay, this thing's uh, critically touted. It looked really cool from the trailer. It wasn't playing in enough theaters close to me, so I didn't get a chance to watch it. Also, didn't get a very wide release here in Washington State. That's why I decided to watch it on streaming. 
And we go to chapter one, her and Oscar are together. They see, you know, family members and how they interact with their kids. <laughs> the debate comes up about kids. By the way, that's why that shirt's back there. You shouldn't force somebody to have kids, basically, is what it comes down to. If a woman doesn't want to have kids, if a guy doesn't want to, if nobody wants to have kids, don't force them. Stop. Don't do this anymore. By the way, this is what could happen with kids. They could suddenly want to summon Satan. Hail Satan! In all seriousness, we find out then from there, things aren't what they seem with her and Oscar. A new romance blossoms, and then we get to see the conflictions of Julie and the widespread effect of her wanting to do her own thing, but also not quite understanding what she wants to do. <clears throat> you don't know what you got till it's gone. They paid paradise and put up a parking lot. And actually that song kind of holds true. Big Yellow Taxi kind of holds true for this movie. And what's great about this movie is the acting. Uh, actress playing Julie, fucking phenomenal. Like, she absolutely deserved the praise she got. Everybody was really good in this. Especially the central characters they focused on. And what I liked about this is it took its time but it didn't drag. <laughs> I can totally understand people not liking this movie, but at the same time, as a character study of dramedy, a, you know, a great piece that shows being stuck in a relationship, uh, sometimes you're not actually stuck. Sometimes what you want, maybe, you know, maybe the grass isn't always greener on the other side. You can't break on through to the other side, break on through to the otter slide, the Oslo slide. Miss that opportunity, more in the pity. But the whole point is, is it's a character study and it's a really, really goddamn good one. And it was, it's one of my favorite films of the year. I know that it uh, debuted at some film festivals last year. That's how I was able to be, you know, plugged at the Golden Globes and the Oscars. But it didn't get a widespread release until this year. So fuck it. It's going to be on my favorite films of the year list. And Julie does writing. She, you know, and there's, you know, some sex stuff. There's, you know, a whole bunch of stuff, a bunch of reflecting, a bunch of Ex, um, <clears throat> explanations among the characters. So there's a lot of really good dialogue. Of course, since this set is set in Norway, it's in Norwegian, obviously. Be a bit weird if it was in Hindu or any other kind of language that isn't central to Norway. You need to turn the captions on. Or you could be like a sucker and listen to the goddamn English track. Or you could just listen and you, know, you could just listen to the audio track that, that it comes in and listen or you know, watch the captions. And not look away, because then otherwise you might miss uh, critical, you know, dialogue pieces and have to rewind it. And sometimes that's a bitch to do. <clears throat> but nevertheless, there are some weird moments in this. A lot of partying. At one point, some characters trip on mushrooms. And it's also this weird point where time freezes and Julie just goes walking through uh, whatever part of Oslo she was in. And <clears throat> that was a really, really cool moment and everything. But yeah, director of Walk and Cheer... I'm Trier. I'm very, very sorry if he haven't even been watching this that I got his name wrong. I really apologize. I actually intend to check out Thelma and a couple other movies that he had a hand in. He has a great pacing to this and understands what it is about subtlety, but also not pulling up on some of this stuff. They don't get super graphic. A lot of it's told through emotion, you know, facial expressions and stuff like that, but it's very, very well, very well thought out how they managed to do it. So now I am going to get into spoilers, but I absolutely encourage you guys to check out The Worst Person in the World. It deserves all the critical praise and all the audience praise it gets. So yeah, it's on Amazon if you want to rent it. It's absolutely worth getting. Neon Studios knocked it out of the fucking park here. But now it's time to get into spoilers. Three, two, one. Spoilers. Okay, spoiler section isn't going to take very long. 20 minutes later. No, in all seriousness. She is at a party <clears throat> sometime after her relationship with her and Oscar. Uh, continues to go, and she meets uh, Evan, and he's he's also got a girlfriend, and it turns out that maybe they're both the worst person in the world, you know, sing not a singularity here, they end up getting together at some point, and even have a weird cheating, not cheating thing at a party, but she's still with Oscar, who does comic stuff, and also is kind of a bit of a dick when he comes to defending his work, um, there's a breakup after she meets Evan again while she's working at the bookstore. And a long, long, long breakup. Like, discussion. Very good stuff. Kind of reminds me of a breakup I had, except I wasn't shouting in Norwegian. She was, which probably explains why the relationship didn't work. Nevertheless, there was there was um, some really good stuff. At one point she says, I have to go. My planet needs me. And Julie died on the uh, way back to her home planet. Julie's dead! <laughs> Anyway, enough jokes right here. 
She feels like a spectator in her own life. There's some good dialogue here, some really good pacing. Now, they do kind of have a, you know, a, a goodbye fuck, so to speak, if, as it were. <laughs> but she gets together with, um, she gets together with Edmund after we see a brief chapter of him and his girlfriend, uh, S uh, Suniva, apologies if I got that wrong, who becomes a bit of an activist and he feels trapped and everything and now they get together. He feels like the worst person in the world because he's cheating on her. And they still interact with their exes to an extent, except Julie then finds out a little bit later after being, after tripping on mushrooms and stuff like that, that her, that her ex, Oscar, after seeing a <coughs> interview on the radio about him doing a whole bunch of other stuff, you know, him defaming his work and all the subject matter that I'm not actually going to mention here. If you've seen the movie, you know, he, it turns out that uh, according to a mutual friend, he has cancer and it's very, very aggressive and it ends up basically eating away at him. Him and Julie meet after so many, after so many months or a couple of years or whatever it is. And they talk and, they obviously do still have feelings for each other. Those feelings don't go away. They, they just don't. There's always something buried deep. But she wanted to be... She wasn't sure she wanted to be a mother earlier in the movie. He wasn't sure he wanted to have kids, but he did want to have kids. But she said, do you think I'll be a good mother? Because it turns out she's actually pregnant. And then um, they have a bit more of a discussion that she was the love of his life and that she is a good person. And she tells Edmund that she's pregnant. And then chapter 12, everything comes to an end. Oscar dies. Um, even though they don't quite show it, it's just that she's walking through Oslo. And he's dead. And then, you know, she had even taken him to his old flat and had done some photography and everything. When he was near death, he was tired, he was in pain, hair was gone, all that stuff. She's upset, she takes a shower, and she get, develops blood pouring down her leg. A miscarriage! Hmm. Happiness? No. Terrible. Terrible. Anybody that has to go through that. I know people that have gone through that, and that's all I'm going to fucking say. I'm not going to share any more information. It's a terrible goddamn thing to go through, from what I've heard. Epilogue. Um, she's part of a film set doing photography, and it turns out that she did lose her kid. Her and uh, Evan have broken up, and that he's with somebody else, and... There you go. That's where the film ends. That's where it ends. She's living her life. Is she living the life she wants? Because she had it good with Oscar, but then he died of cancer. She had it good with Edwin, but she lost the kid. And it really proves that some decisions, some actions have consequences. The movie is really goddamn good. A great character study. It's tough to watch at times, but it is, it is well worth investing your time in. I'm going to give it an A+. Plus. Yes, I've given that grade out a lot, but it's hard not to praise this fucking movie because it's really fucking good. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Ricklin. I'll see you soon.